Take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to Mark chapter 14. And while you're turning to Mark 14, I do want to remind you now we got several shut-ins that uh, we request prayer for. Do remember Jim and Alice, keep them in your prayers. Also, Brother Earl Tucker, continue to pray for Rosie as she's recovering. We got Joe and uh, Lydia Roden, keep them in your prayers. Continue to pray for Miss Pat Warren. Uh, it was good to see her in here this morning, but she is struggling with her health. Continue to pray for Brother Ken and Bobby and Valerie. So we that was a mouthful. That was a lot of people that that are struggling right now. They're under the, under the guns, as they say. They're going through the storms. So do pray for them, that the Lord would just touch them, comfort them, and give them what they need. And also remember to pray for those that are traveling. we got several families out. Uh, traveling out of town, just pray for them. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Uh, what a blessing. Just uh, service like this, you, you'd want to preach and mess it up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, you just want to just keep going, just keep, just, just Lord, just, just do something, you know, kind of thing. But uh, I will have you a short message here tonight. I'll, I'll cut it down a little bit. Mark 14, Mark 14, you should be there. We're going to start looking at verse 32. We'll start looking at verse 32. This is when Jesus went into the garden there at Gethsemane. It's when he prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. This is the story we're going to read here. And in, in verse 32, and they came to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he, and he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And he said to them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and, and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. He cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saying to, the, saying to Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The Spirit truly is ready but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. He cometh a third time and said to them, Sleep on. Sleep on now, take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of of sinners, rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Now we're familiar with this story where Jesus prayed in the garden. It's in the other gospel accounts as well where Jesus went and he prayed in the garden. But, but what I wanted to point out was that all of them had went except for Judas Iscariot. Judas has gone out and he's betraying Jesus. He's getting a, a soldiers and stuff to come back with him and getting ready to kiss Jesus. That's the sign he's going to give them and everything. So Jesus is there with the eleven that are left of the twelve. And he goes into the garden and the first thing he does there in verse 32 is he tells them to sit here. Like they might have been a comfortable place for some of them to sit. Sit ye here. Then he took what is known as the inner circle. Peter, James, and John. And he took them a little further into the garden. And he said, watch here and pray while I go yonder and pray. You can read all the gospel accounts and that's what, that, what he did. He, he took that inner circle a little bit closer. That The other ones were sitting out there. They probably couldn't even see Jesus. But where those other ones were, they would have been within sight of Jesus. Jesus took that inner circle and asked them to watch and pray with him as he was praying. He gets up and he comes back and what does he find? 
They're asleep. He wakes them up and he goes back and he prays again. And he comes back and they're asleep. And he says, could you not stay awake and watch and pray for an hour? And he goes back and prays. And he comes back yet the third time and what does he find? They're asleep. They're asleep. His inner circle, his closest friends, John, the beloved, whom the Lord loveth, was in there. Peter, who's supposed to be the rock of the church, so to speak, he's in there. But they failed him. When he asked for something specific, when he needed them, when he personally requested of them to do something for him, they failed him. They failed him. I got to thinking, I wonder how many times we failed him. I wonder how many times he had a job for me to do and I failed him. I wonder how many times he come looking to see if I had done what he asked and he found me asleep. He found us asleep. He found us not doing what he asked. I wonder how many times I failed him and if it ever got to the place where he just pulled back and said, go ahead and sleep. Oh my, that's a scary thought to think that we could let down our Savior. But here, His very own disciples did in an hour of need. But here's what I want to preach on from this passage. It was a thought. Dangers to avoid. There's some dangers in this passage that we should, as Christians, should try to avoid. Now I know that we can't, I know that Paul tells us we're to avoid all appearance of evil. I know we're to stay away from uh, certain things like uh, it shouldn't be lying, cheating, stealing. We all know that we should stay away from those things. Drugs and drinking and, and, and sex outside the marriage. We know we should avoid those things. But there's some other things that you may not think about that we should avoid. We're going to give you a different way of looking at it. There in verse 32, he told some of them to sit down. Now I know that's what the Lord had told them to do and he told them to wait there. But there's a danger in Christians who sit down. First thing I want to say, there's a danger in sitting down. As Christians... Usually when, you, when we talk about sitting down, it makes you think of, of, of retiring, resting, you're done. I remember uh, working, being, I used to call it sticking your face in the furnace. Uh, we, when, when it's hot like it's been this summer and somebody drive from Hickory or Wilkesboro, I used to have the police department, they always come in and want me to work on their car there at the Ford Place. We did Alexander counties, and then when they found out that I would do what they were asking, uh, uh, their county wouldn't do them, but so uh, it's bringing all their Wilkes County cars down there to get me to do the updates on their stuff. And I was doing all that stuff, and they'd drive in from Wilkesburg. They're always in a hurry. They needed it done as soon as they pulled in. So no time to let the car cool down. You pop the hood, and I used to say it's like climbing in the oven. I mean, when it's already 90-something degrees, paved parking lot all around, this car's been on the road for 30, 40 minutes, and then they pull in, and then you stick your face under there and take your breath away just to work under there. And I'd be in that heat sometimes all day, and it's no different than a roofer or a farmer or somebody out there, a construction worker that's working out in the sun. No different than people that's mowing the grass and doing different things outside without air, you know. Uh, get hot and then when you come home and you get that you step inside the air conditioned house and whoo feel like stepping in the refrigerator and then you go get that glass of iced tea and you sit down how many of us ever had something to do when you got home but you sat down first 
You know what I'm talking about. I would have been better off to got out of the truck and just went and jumped on the mower or just went and jumped on the tractor or just went and done what I needed to do. But I messed up. I sat down. There's a danger in sitting down too early. There's nothing wrong with resting when you need rest. There's nothing wrong with taking a break when you need to take a break. But when you sit down, sometimes that's the end. I know a lot of Christians that just sit down on the Lord. They just, they just sit down. They were serving Him. They were doing good. But then they just sit down. And they have done nothing since. I'm just going to rest for a little bit. How many of you sit down and dozed off in the chair? <laughs> Don't wake up till after dark. You're like, man, I didn't mean to do that. But you got in there and you got comfortable and you, you, you finally got some relief from the heat or the stress of the day and, and you just dozed off. Oh, that's the danger as a Christian. We don't need to sit down on the Lord. Especially not in these last days, we don't need to sit down. Second one that I'll mention is the danger of laying down. He come back and they were asleep. I imagine they were sitting there nodding, you know, maybe leaning on each other or something the first time. But that second or third time, by the time they come back, they was exhausted. They done stretched out. They wasn't sitting on the sofa no more. They done stretched out and had the, had the little comforter pulled over them like a blanket. They were gone. They were drooling. You know what I'm talking about. They were gone. And there's a lot of Christians like that. Sadly, <coughs> sadly, a lot of Sunday school teachers and bus workers and preachers today have just laid down. They laid down their Bibles. They laid down the tracks. They laid down on witnessing. They laid down on even coming to church faithfully. They just laid down on the Lord. They laid down on prayer. You know, the devil, he, he'll turn the air conditioning down for you. He'll fluff up the pillows for you. He'll even sing you a lullaby if you just stay seated, if you just stay laying down. We have an adversary, the devil, and he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And he'll do anything to get you to quit serving God. He'll do anything to get you to lay down your Bible, lay down your witness, lay down your standards, lay down your testimony, lay down <coughs> on him. Just sit down. And then before you know it, he'll have you laying down. Here's another one that we have to worry about today. Here's another one we have to worry about. In verses 43, look at this. Look at verse 43 there in that same passage. And immediately while yet spoke cometh Judas, one of the twelve, with him great multitude, with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes of the elders. There, there's, there's a danger of being run down being run down. Uh, there's, a, there's a verse in Galatians 5, 7 that says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Notice it says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? <coughs> was it the flesh? Was it the world? Was it the devil? Who was it that hindered you? Who is it that hindered you? Here we know Judas is the one that betrayed Jesus. But what is hindering you from serving the Lord? What is hindering you from doing what He's told you to do? What is keeping you from the service that God expects of you? Well, the devil and the world will tell you, you it's too big for you. You're not smart enough. You're not strong enough. You're not good enough. You don't have enough talent. Well, the devil's a liar. Amen? Uh, the truth of the matter is we can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. It is the Lord that does it through us. I don't depend on me. I know I'll fail, but I'm trusting the Lord to do His part. I'll do what little I can do and trust that He'll bless it. 
Amen. Amen. And He'll do His part. He'll use it for His glory. But many get hindered. They allow people to just run them down. They they just they get tired. They 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 just keep pushing and going and going and don't take a break. Don't take care of themselves, and they run down. They let the batteries run down. You know when. The, uh, kids don't understand this, especially like Tessa at young ages, you know, uh, Nevaeh at that age, they don't understand. You know, when, they're, when they've got a game, they're playing with it. When they're done with it, they just leave it in the floor or something, or you tell them to go put it in the toy box, they'll put it in the toy box, but they don't think to turn it off. So in the middle of the night, you're laying there, and all of a sudden you hear, Hello. And you're like, Hello? <laughs> you know, I don't know how many times in the middle of the night just where the toys just go off for random. Like, where did that even come from? Uh, but the, the toys just go off and then you realize I, she had something on didn't turn it off. So your next time when she goes to get it, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? It's out of juice. It's run down. It's ineffective. It's not going to work anymore. Sometimes we allow the world and problems to run us down and we can't run for the Lord. We're allowing everything else to control us when we ought to be concentrating on what God wants us to do. We're doing everything else and we're spending our energy and we're going to be run down before we know it. How many of you ever heard this? Uh, uh, there's a saying. Uh, oh, I forget how, how is it? Don't put too many irons in the fire. Or they got too many irons in the fire. How many of you ever heard that? Uh, sometimes that's what Christians do. We get too many irons in the fire. We need to stop and prioritize what should we really be doing with the time God's given us, with the energy God's given us, with the talent God's given us. What should we be doing with it? What would be the most effective what will have the most impact? What will create the greatest influence? What would do that with what little I have? Serving who? Myself or the Lord? Amen. Don't allow yourself to be run down. Don't allow anything or anyone to hinder you. Here's another one. There's a danger of being cut down. Uh, there, you can read on down there about verse 47. Peter, there's, there's talking about swords. and It's in John 18 as well uh, where it talks about this same story where Peter pulls out his sword. Remember when Judas kissed him, the soldiers come to take him. Peter pulls out his sword and he cuts off one of them's ears. Jesus stopped him. But see, there's a danger of being cut down. See, what, what you don't read in this story is had, had Jesus not stopped Peter and told him to put that sword up, had Jesus not healed that man's ear, then he cut him to death right there. He was against an army of men, armed. One fisherman with a sword wouldn't have stood a chance. Jesus saved his life, whether he realizes that or not, by telling him to put his sword away and healing that man's ear. He was in danger of being cut down. He was in danger of being cut off. People who act on impulse a lot of time, people who act without prayer or seeking directions, people who make decisions based on emotions and feelings, a lot of times rather than the Word of God and, and through prayer seeking His face, that they, they make rash decisions and they put themselves in danger. A lot of men have messed up. A lot of women have messed up. They get mad at work and that's it. I quit. Just storm out the door. I told them. They get to home. They get home, they get to thinking. I'm going to have to find another job now. How am I going to feed my family? They get to call and they get to trying to find work and there's no work there. <coughs> they can't find a job 
and, and it's hard times and they struggle and then they realize I should have kept my mouth shut till I found a job. But see, they acted on impulse. And that's the way we are. As, as people, we have that natural tendency. When something rubs us wrong, we blurt out. We're angry and mad and we say something sharp back to people and we react without thinking. We should think before we react. That's the hard part. The hard part is stopping long enough to think. Because a lot of times people are in danger of being cut down. A lot of times people quit church out of rash decisions, hurt feelings, based off emotions rather than thought or direction. They're in danger of being cut off spiritually. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's one to think about. This one is this one's going to challenge your thinker just a little bit. In, in verse 50, uh, look at that one. And they all forsook him and fled. In that is Peter, the one who was ready to fight for him, the one who had ripped out the sword and cut a man's ear off. I mean, he was probably standing there ready to go. He was ready for a fight. He wasn't backing down for nothing or nobody. Then Jesus says, stop. Put your sword up. And fix this what he messed up. Jesus stepped in and made him back down. Now stop and think about this. Here's the problem, the danger in backing down. Peter had the attitude, I'll never back down. I'll never back down. He's the one that said, I'm ready to go to prison for you. I'm ready to die for you. I'm willing to give my life for you. And he proved it when he pulled out that sword. But Jesus made him back down. And when he had to back down, he lost courage. He lost confidence. He lost his confidence. That's what led him to lose his courage. And when he lost confidence and courage, he lost his conviction. And before the night's over, he's cussing that he don't even know Jesus. Why? Because he had to back down. As Christians, we shouldn't back down. Now listen, we shouldn't go and stir up fights that we don't have to fight. We shouldn't jerk out our sword and just go trying to cut everybody with it just because we can cut them, amen? amen? But if we've got the truth and we're standing for truth, we ought not back down. Amen. Unless the Lord tells us to, we shouldn't back down. I, I will say this, I mentioned it during Sunday school this morning about Paris and those transgenders and those uh, perverts and what they did in Paris and mocking, mocking the, the, the Christianity. I, I think every Christian in the Olympics ought to formally complain Amen. if not just step plumb out. I know they dedicated four years of their life and training just for this little short window to show what they can do. But what's more important? People want an opportunity to stand up for Jesus. People want an opportunity to do something for Jesus. There it is. At least speak up for Him. At least uh, stand up. Don't back down now. Amen. Amen. Because if we start backing down, we're going to lose ground. When we back down, we will lose confidence. And when we're forced to back down, we lose courage. And soon we'll lose our conviction. And we'll find ourselves just like Peter, cussing with the world. Let's keep going. There's another danger that happened this night that we should try to avoid. The danger of cooling down. Cooling down. 
What happened is, see, he, he, he lost that courage. He lost that confidence. He didn't have the conviction he once had because, you know, he was all for gun ho But now he's timid and he's following afar off. And he follows Jesus all the way into one of the judge's courtyards and everything. Remember, John gets him in there and, and he's timid and he stays back and he finds himself cold. So he goes over there and he's having to warm himself by the enemy's fire. He's warming himself. Why? Because he cooled down. There's a danger in cooling down. You, you've heard the expression, they're on fire for God. They love the Lord. They're living for the Lord. They're giving it all. They got zeal. They got passion. They got a burden. We ought to keep that. We ought to say, Lord, don't let me cool down. Lord, I don't want to cool down. I want to be on fire for you. I want to serve you. I want to be first in line. I want to be first there. I want to be the first one to step up and do it. I want to be the one to witness. I want you to use me, Lord. I want you to use me, Lord. But he had cooled down. And when he cooled down, he found himself warming himself with the enemy. The one who the ones who wanted Jesus dead. Christian, have you cooled down? Has your love for the Lord cooled down? Has your desire to see your lost loved ones saved? Has that cooled down? Have you lost that burden, that zeal, that drive you once had? Has it cooled down? There's a danger also, the last one, and I'll close. There's a danger of going down. Verse 66, And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there he was beneath, there's a danger of going down. He was with the world. He was warming with the world. He was talking like the world. He was acting like the world. He was trying to blend in with the world it gone down. It gone down as far as you could go as a Christian. What about you? How many times have I seen that play out over the years as a pastor? How many times have I seen that play out over the years as a Christian just having friends? in church and seeing them come in and seeing them on fire for God and God blessing them and then all of a sudden they just sit down for a little bit and then they're laying down then they're knocked down then they're cut down and before you long before you know it they're just they're just out they don't care about God they don't care about anything they've gone down not even in church. Many have sat down. Many are laying down. Some are run down. They're just tired. Others, the devil's trying to cut them down. Some, they just back down. While others are cooling down. But there's a danger in going down. Any move away from the Lord Jesus Christ is a downward move. I forget who said it, but the other night when one of them was preaching, uh, it, it, I, I don't know if it was Brother Ryan or Brother Bradley, but one of them made a statement. And, and they said, if, you were, if, if you're not as close to the Lord now as you once were, you're backslid. You're going down if you've if you're not as close to the Lord as you used to be. We ought to be drawing closer to the Lord. We ought to be falling more in love with the Lord. We ought to be learning more of Him. And the more of Him we learn, the more of Him we love. Amen. The more of Him we love, the more of Him we desire to serve. So you're, you're getting on fire. You're getting hotter and hotter rather than colder and colder. Church, Christian, young people, even moms and dads, there's some dangers we need to avoid.
I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes.